This video will cover moderate level questions regarding the topic of one-sided limit. This is the first question. Limit as x approaches minus 2 from the right, then the numerator is minus 4. When writing this part, it is not necessary to write minus 4 from the right side. What we have to worry about and look at is the number of zero form. Only when the denominator becomes zero, we need to check whether it is zero from the right or zero from the left. So let's check the denominator. In fact, minus 2 from the right side means minus 1,9999999. But if you are confused about this, try using the number line. It's much easier to understand when you see it, so try using it a lot. So minus 2 from the right side means here, a little bit greater than minus 2. So remit as x approaches minus 2 from the right side, then x squared means 4. But it's actually 3.9999999. So limit as x approaches minus 2 from the right side, then x squared minus 4 equals 0, but this one is 3.99999 minus 4 is actually less than 0. So make this from the left side. So this one is 0 from the left side. So 4 over 0 means infinity, and negative divided by negative makes positive. So answer is positive infinity. This is the next one. Use the number line. 0 and minus 2. So minus 2 from the left side means minus 2,000001 is here. So limit as x approaches minus 2 from the left side x squared is actually 4. But think about this. This number squared is a little bit greater than 4. So 4.000001 is actually greater than 4. So limit as x approaches minus 2 from the left side, x squared minus 4 equals this one is 4,000001 minus 4. So big number minus small number make positive. So 0 from the right side. So back to original. So minus 2 here, the numerator will be minus 4. And the denominator is 0 from the right side. And then 4 over 0 makes infinity. And negative divided by positive makes negative. So answer is negative infinity. This is the next one. This is 0 over 0 form. We need the conjugate of the numerator. So times square root of x plus 2 over square root of x plus 2. Then the limit x approaches 4 from the left side. The numerator is a minus b and a plus b form. So a minus b a plus b equals a squared minus b squared. So square root of x squared means just x minus 2 squared means 4 over x minus 4. Then keep the next one. Square root of x plus 2. Then cancel the common factor. Then limit x approaches 4 from the left side. Then 1 over square root of x plus 2. But this time, when you put 4 from the left side into x, like this, it's not 0. So don't think about 4 from the left side or 4 from the right side. It's just a square root of 4. So 1 over square root of 4 plus 2, 1 over 2 plus 2, which is 1 over 4. This is the answer. Before we start the next question, I want to explain y equals the greatest integer function. 
it is defined as the largest integer that is less than or equal to x. For example, 1 equals 1. The 1 is here. And 1.1 1 .1 equals 1. 1.5 equals 1. So 1.5, 1.999. 1 equals 1. Then how about 2.5 equals 2. How about 3.7 equals 3. So 3.7 is here. Make 3 like this. And 4.1 equals 4. Positive part is easy. When you see the inside of a bracket, like large n plus alpha, the large n means integer, alpha means decimal number. So when you see 1, take the 1, only take the integer part. Then you see 2.5, then cut the 5, just the 2. 3.7, just the 3. 4.1, just 4. Like this. Just take n. But negative part is difficult. Minus 1.1 1 .1. It's not minus 1. Actually, minus 1.1 1 .1 equals minus 2. So minus 1.1 .1 is here. This one is minus 2. And actually, minus 1.1 1 .1 we can rewrite as minus 2 plus 0 0.9 and then take minus 2 part like this. So this alpha means always positive but less than 1. So when you see the negative number inside the bracket like this, just to think one number less than integer part. So minus 2 means answer is minus 3. So minus 3.7, answer is minus 4. Minus 4.1, answer is minus 5 like that. So always take one number less than the number. Surely use the greatest integer function to solve the limit. This is the next question. The limit of the greatest integer function as x approaches 3 from the right means 3.000001 so it's positive so just take the integer part answer is 3 this is the next question as x approaches 3 from the left side means 2.99999 so just take the number in integer part 2 or you can use the number line 0 and 3. This one, 3 from the left side is here. So a little bit less than 3, which means 2.99999. This is the next one. The limit of the greatest integer function as x approaches 0 from the left means, use the number line, this is 0. So 0 from the left means here is negative part. So this number minus 0 0.000001. Do you remember? It's negative. So take the number less than the visible integer by 1, so which is minus 1. This is the next question. This is 0. This is minus 3. Minus 3 from the right side means here. So this one is minus 2.9999999 is negative. So take the number less than the visible integer by 1, which is minus 3. This is the next one. Use the number line, 0 and minus 3. Minus 3 from the left side means here. So that means minus 3.00001. It's negative. So take the number less than the visible integer by 1, which is minus 4.
This is the next one. It's a limit of trigonometric function. We have to use the graph. We can start with the graph of y equals sine x. If we want to draw the reciprocal of y equals sine x, it looks like this. The limit of cosecant of x as x approaches 0 from the right side. The graph goes up like this. The answer is infinity. But what if you can draw the graph of y equals sine x, but you can draw the graph of y equals cosecant x? In that case, you can use y equals sine x. So the graph of y equals sine x must be remembered. Please remember this one. Back to the original. Cosecant x is 1 over sine x. So we can rewrite as limit as x approaches 0 from the right side, 1 over sine x. Then think about this. Limit as x approaches 0 from the right side, sine of x equals 0 from the right side. The graph goes here. Maybe here. 0, but looks like above the 0. So 0 from the right side. So this one is 1 over 0 from the right side. So infinity, but positive. This is the next question and the last question. I want to use the same technique as question 9. We don't need to graph y equals secant x, but we need a graph of y equals cosine x. So please remember this graph. When x approaches pi over 2 from the right, like this, the graph goes to 0 here, but in fact, just a little bit less than 0. So this means 0 from the left side, limit, x approaches pi over 2 from the right side, secant x means 1 over cosine x, this is 1 over that time, the graph goes here, 0 from the left side. So answer is infinity, but minus. So negative infinity is the answer. I hope this video has been helpful. The previous lesson is linked in the description bar below. If you have any questions, leave them in a comment. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more.